Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everyone. Auzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Fatih al-Khatim wa ala Ali al-Qadim al-Adhim. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as promised, as from today on, inshallah, we are going to conduct a series of lectures on this topic, Ramadan and Revelation. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayya al-lazina amnu kutiba alaykum siyamu kama kutiba ala al-lazina min kablikum la'allakum tatakun ayyama ma'adudat. Faman kana minkum maridan aw ala safarin fa iddatun min ayyama al-ukhar. Wa ala al-lazina yitikunahu fidir da'awun masakin, da'awun miskin. فمن تأوى خيرا فهو خير الله وأن تصوموا خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريدا أو على سفر فإدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسرى ولا يريد بكم العسرى ولتكمل العدة ولتكبر الله على ما هديكم ولعلكم تشكرون صدق الله العظيم. This verse is revealed in the second chapter of the Holy Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, were revealed to church all the Muslims across the history up to the end of the world with an obligation of fasting in the month of Ramadan. While the verse prescribed this obligation, it made it clear that we are not the first nation that were bound by this obligation of fasting. That is why the Almighty Allah said, Kutiba alaykum siyamu. Fasting is made obligatory upon you. Kama kutiba ala ladhina min kablikum. In the same manner, it was made obligatory upon those who came before you. As if a question is raised here, what are the effects that are expected to be brought by this obligation? The Almighty Allah said, La Allah kum so that you may learn fighting. That is, by undertaking this obligation, faithful are expected to learn piety. If we may explore this particular point, that's of how to learn piety while observing the fasting of Ramadan, there are quite a number of lessons, in fact, certain restrictions that are imposed during this holy period. For example, the Prophet Sallallahu said, وَإِنِمْرُ أُنْشَاتَ مَا كَفَقُلْ إِنِمْرُ أُنْسَائِمْ إِنِمْرُ أُنْسَائِمْ إِنِمْرُ أُنْسَائِمْ أَكَمَا قَالَ إِمَا زَمَانَ In a long tradition, the Prophet said, during this holy period of fasting, even if somebody engage you in a fight, for example, he abused you, insulted you, or even he engaged you in a physical combat. Do not respond to him. Rather, you are, let your response be in Nimr Unsaim, in Nimr Unsaim, in Nimr Unsaim. I am fasting, I am fasting, I am fasting. Three times. So you can see this has never been said with regard to other months of the year. It's only during Ramadan that you are not expected to even retaliate. We know retaliation is allowed. We know if one is abused and one cannot control his temper. In some verses in the chapter of Surah Nisa, the Almighty Allah said, La hibbullahu al-jar bisu'i minan kawli illa man dhulim. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ سَمِيًا عَلِيمًا صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ The Almighty Allah doesn't like an expression 
of insults or bad tongue except for those who are wronged. Those who are wronged are allowed to express their anger even in some in some in some abusive words, for example. No, well, of course abuse is not encouraged enough for them to express that they are angry is allowed. But not in the months of Ramadan. You can see how we can learn piety. You can see how we can learn how to be pious during this holy period. So you can see the wisdom. And also, the Prophet ﷺ instructed us that during this holy month, we should make sure that we do not backbite. Because backbiting, even outside the holy month, is not allowed. But it is more discouraged during this noble days of Ramadan. One shouldn't keep aloof from eating wholesome food, yet he would eat the raw flesh of his Muslim brother. Because backbiting is described in the chapter Sotul Hujurat as consumption of raw flesh of your brother. The Almighty Allah said, Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Ya ya lazid amanu. Ichani buka sira minad dhan. Inna baada zhan ithim. Wala ta jassasu. Wala yakta ba'dukum ba'da. Ahubbu ahadukum anya kula lahma akhi mayitan fakaritumu. Wattakullah. إن الله تواب الحكيم. So سبحان الله لازم. The Almighty Allah said, "O you of faith, try as much as possible to abstain from that is from bad presumption." You can't just presume that somebody is intending to harm you, a mere presumption. Because in most cases, to presume that someone is intending to harm you, in most cases, it may turn out to be a crime, a sinful act. Do you not spy on each other? Wala te jasasu. Wala yakta ba'du kumbada. Do you not backbite each other? Ayhubbu hadukum anya akula lahma akiyi majitam fakaritumu. Is there anyone of you wishing to consume the raw flesh of his of, that is the raw flesh of his dead brother. The raw meat of his dead brother. Is there any one of you that can afford that? Can afford to consume and eat the raw meat of his dead brother? So you can see how the Almighty Allah describe backbiting even outside the holy months. So that is how to learn piety during these days of Ramadan. So many things and in addition because if you observe the lessons of Ramadan most of the obligations in Islam are of the nature that we should do this. For example, five daily prayers means we should engage in prayer five times a day. We should perform prayers past five times a day. When you come to Zakat, we are, we are obliged to pay out regular charity, obligatory charity. And Hajj, 
pilgrimage means performance of pilgrimage to the house of God to wear it in Mecca. But when it comes to fasting, most of what is required in terms of obligation fasting, it is abstinence. We should abstain from eating, abstain from having any carnal affair, and abstain from drinking anything. Abstain, abstain, that is abstination from certain things. Means It means restriction, not performance. Fasting is the only obligation of all the five pillars of Islam in which we are required to abstain rather than perform. In the case of prayers, it is performance. So is the case with zakah. Paying out zakah means doing something. Hajj means performance. We should journey from wherever we are to the house of God's dwelling in Mecca and perform certain rites of pilgrimage. That is pilgrimage. But when it comes to Ramadan or fasting, it means we should abstain rather than perform. We shouldn't do rather than do. We are urged to abstain from doing rather than we are urged to doing certain things. So that means Ramadan is meant to train us on how to abstain from things that we desire in life. Things that are allowed because consumption of food is allowed generally. So is taking drinks in as much as it is not alcoholic. And of course having carnal affair with one's wife is allowed. But during the days of Ramadan, we are banned from doing all these things. A restriction is imposed on us that we shouldn't do such things that are generally allowed. They are otherwise allowed, but they are forbidden during the months of Ramadan. You can see most of the lessons of the months of Ramadan have to do with restriction and keeping aloof from something that we are accustomed to doing. So this is very important. That is why the Almighty Allah said, La Allah kum una, so that you may learn piety. And if you can take a little, if you can go a little bit, if we can go back a little bit, we can see the verse said, Kama kutiba ala ladina min kablikum. In the same way, fasting is prescribed, is made obligatory upon those who came before you. That implies that all the bygone generations, all the bygone nations that received messages from heaven were obliged to perform fasting. That means that we are not the first nation to be charged with this obligation. All the nations that receive messages from heaven, right from the time of Prophet Adam down to the time of Prophet Jesus Christ, peace be upon them all, they were all charged with this obligation. And perhaps this might be longer in terms of the days that they may observe the fasting. They might have been charged to observe fasting of more than a month or so. Only God knows. But for us, how long, for how long are we expected to endure uh, the that is to endure this exercise of fasting. How long is this? Are we expected to perform? That is to 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 stay within the confines of the teachings of Ramadan. Does that mean that it is going to be performed in the same manner five daily prayers are being performed? Does that mean that it has to be 
an everyday affair? Does that because that is the, that's what happens to, with five daily prayers? Does that mean that fasting is also obligatory throughout our life? The Almighty Allah said, "No, I am a madu that." This obligation is meant to last only for a, quite a number of days, after which you are free to, uh, to resume your normal life. So, now, having known that it will not last, uh, that it's not an obligation that is meant to be observed on daily basis, it's quite relieving. And how about those with some terrible cases that might not allow them to perform this obligation? What would they do? For example, those that are sick, those that are on a journey, so on and so forth. The Almighty Allah said, فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيدًا أَوْ أَلَى سَفَرٍ فَإِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُكَرٍ those that are sick, those that are sick or on a journey, for it that mean a yamin okar, they may count some other days. That is, they may they they don't have to fast during their period of sickness or their period of journey, and they may perform the obligation after the expression of the months of Ramadan. who can hardly perform this obligation, they can pay ransom in the form of feeding the destitute and needies. Yet, those who can summon the courage to perform this obligation, it will be better for them. Despite all, all odds, despite all manner of circumstances, then the then all these verses that we have read are yet to specify the month that is the fact that it is just an obligation that is meant to last for a number of days, those number of days are not specified. So it is this subsequent verse that will specify the number of days and which of the uh, that which particular days are we expected to perform the fasting? The Almighty Allah says, "Sharu Ramadan al-Lazi kunzila fi al-Quran, huda al-Nasi." The months of Ramadan in which the Holy Quran was revealed as a guidance for the mankind and a veritable science a veritable science indicating pure guidance and a criterion that would distinguish for you what is right from what is wrong. So here a specification is made that the 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 days the days are the days are the days are the days are no more than 30 or 29 days 29 or 90, 30 days of the month of Ramadan. And why, why, why the month of Ramadan? Why not any other month? You can see how the Almighty Allah is taking care of our hypothetical questions that we may raise. 
it's quite natural for somebody to raise this question that why the month of Ramadan? Why not Sha'aban? Why not Shawwal? Why not Zul Hijjah? Why not the month of Rabiul Awwal? The Almighty Allah says, Sharu Ramadan Lazi Unzila Fihi al Quran. You can see the purpose. You can see the reason why Ramadan is, uh, is singled out as the month in which we should fast. Because it's the month in which the Holy Quran was revealed. You can see the connection between the revelation and the month of Ramadan. Alazim Zilafir Quran, Huda Lid Nasi, as a guidance for mankind, Wabayinati Binal Huda, and also a veritable science indicating pure guidance, Minal Huda Wal Furqan, and a criterion. So, the only way we can offer our gratitude to the Almighty Allah for these great favors is to fast in this month of Ramadan. So the, even the gratitude is prescribed for us by the Almighty Himself. How to show gratitude to Him for the revelation of the Holy Quran and for the fact that a criterion is sent down for us uh, to us so that it can, we can by which we can distinguish right from wrong, good from bad, and so on and so forth. So, uh, I uh, remember in the earlier verse, the Almighty Allah said the, uh, the fasting was made of regularity for those who came before us. And of course, that implies that all the nations who came before us, observe the obligation of fasting. Let's pick one of those nations and let's see the connection between fasting and the month of Ramadan. Uh, between, uh, that is the connection between the revelation of the Holy Quran or generally revelation with the fasting. Remember Prophet Moses when he was delivered with his people from Pharaoh, and when Pharaoh was destroyed, the Almighty Allah made a covenant with Moses. The Almighty Allah said, "Auzu billahi min ash-shaitan ar-rajim, wa izwa adna Musa arba'ina laylatan, summa stakastum al-idil min badi wa antum barimun." That is in Bakara. In the chapter of Surah Al-Araf, he said, "Wa wa adna Musa salasina laylatan, wa atmamna bi'ashin." فَتَمَّ مِيكَ تُرَبِّي أَرْبَعِينَ لَيْلَ The Almighty Allah said, remember when we took a covenant with Moses that we charged him with an obligation of fasting for 30 consecutive days after which he will receive a revelation of Torah from us, said the Almighty. And When he finished fasting, he washed his mouth in preparation to go for the appointment with the Almighty Allah. The Almighty Allah asked him, why did you wash your mouth? He said, well, because I, I observe a period of 30 days of fasting, so I know definitely my mouth will be some, uh, will have some order sort of. So I need to wash my mouth before coming to you. The Almighty Allah said, don't you know that what you describe as mouth order is dearer to me than the scent of misk? So go and add 10 more days of fasting. Wa Musa wa so that is how Moses had to fast for 10 more days for him to prepare himself for the appointment with his creator. So you can see the connection between revelation from heaven and fasting. I'm going to stop here inshallah. When I come back in the next session, I'm going to continue exactly where I stop. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Fati lima umlik wal-Khatimi lima sabak ناصر الحق بالحق ولادي إلى سرادك المستقيم ولا آل يقدم دار العظيم 
ሰባ ነብከብዘ ተመሰሰን ብላለ ብስላም አለኩ